On today's Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, we'll be exploring high-speed flash photography, what it means, how it works, and what the results look like. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first thrice weekly, I like that, you like that? Thrice weekly live show on photography, video, anything camera related here on the YouTubes every, every, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it was weekday, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. If you can be here live, that's super awesome because you get to participate in the chat. You can do this, you can ask questions, and if you have a question for me live, make sure you type at Photo Joseph so it shows up nice and pretty and red on the screen like you're seeing there. Today's topic is high speed sync. This is where you are shooting with your strobe, your on-camera flash, at a higher than standard shutter speed of what your camera can handle. On most cameras, it's called high speed sync or high speed flash. On the Lumix cameras, it's called FP mode. We're not really sure. I don't know what this means. I'm like, is it is it fancy pants mode? I, I, I like fancy pants. Or it could be um, fantastic Panasonic. It could be flash pulse. I honestly I don't know. I asked and no one got back to me. The manual just says FP mode. I'm like really. So I don't know what it's supposed to be called. Maybe somebody in the comments actually knows what FP is. Um, but we are uh, we are going to be working with this high speed FP, high speed sync, HSS, whatever you want to call it mode today. So first, before we get into playing with the camera, let's talk about. Let's talk about why you need this, what it is, what it does. To explain this completely, we will illustrate with a cardboard box. Look, I made a prop. I'm very proud of myself. I didn't even cut myself or anything doing it. Okay, imagine this is your camera shutter. Your sensor is in here. This is the sensor. See the gray box? That's the sensor. Normally, the shutter's closed. Ha! <laughs> This is cool. Right, so normally the shutter's closed. So when you normally take a photo, what happens is the shutter, it's two parts, the shutter. It's kind of two stages. The shutter goes out, it goes pop, and it opens, and now light is exposing, whether that is natural light, whether it's strobe light, whatever. It's exposing, flash goes pop, exposes, and then another shutter goes and closes. Okay, so this is normal, right? You've got shutter drops down, it's completely open, and another shutter closes behind it. And of course, that happens over the space of a 60th of a second, 125th of a second, 250th of a second, whatever it is. The duration, the shutter speed that you've set on your camera is how long this window is open. Okay, so that's that's basically how this works. So there is a limit on every standard shutter camera. Now, leaf shutter cameras don't have this limit. That's a whole other conversation. But standard cameras, mirrorless or mirrored, same thing. The shutter works the same way. The shutter opens, the sensor is exposed. If it was film, the film would be exposed, and then the shutter closes again. Essentially what happens when you're shooting flash photography is it opens. Once it's open all the way, the flash fires pop, and then the shutter closes. Now, the fastest that this gap can be there on pretty much every modern camera is 250th of a second. So if you put the flash on your camera and you go into manual mode and you start adjusting the shutter speed, you can take it down as long as you want. But if you go high, you go fast, you're gonna max out at 250 and it's not gonna go anymore. And you're going, well, hold on, I know my camera goes higher than 250, but not in flash mode. So, because this has to be open completely, because what would happen, what happens when you shoot higher than 250 of a second is the shutter is never actually all the way open. So here's what happens. So again, normally, that opens, this one drops in and closes, right, okay. But, in a high speed mode, anything above 250th, what happens, let's go all the way up to 8,000th, let's go for the crazy high speed. This starts to open, now, obviously we're doing this in, you know, kind of slow motion. This starts to open long before the bottom shutter gets to the bottom, the top one starts to close. And what you end up doing is exposing the sensor a strip at a time. Oh, right, so that's what happens in high speed Flat, I mean, high speed photography over 250 of a second. The shutter is not open the entire time. Okay, so what does this have to do with flash? Well, if the shutter is only ever open, if the shutter is only ever open a slit, I suppose I could push it. Seriously, stop it. <laughs> Honest to God, the people I have to deal with right here. Okay, if the shutter is only ever partially open, and you fire the flash right now, what's gonna happen? 
right, the flash is only going to expose this little part of the sensor there. Right? You're not going to expose the whole sensor. Well, that's not good. So what happens in high-speed sync is the flash doesn't fire once. It fires multiple times. I believe even hundreds of times. They're like micro pulses. And if you were to look at the flash on an oscilloscope, you would see this. And you can find videos about that kind of thing on the internet. What happens is the shutter starts to open. There's a slit. The flash fires. It moves a little bit more. The flash fires again. It moves a little bit more. Flash fires again. More flash fires again. Flash fires again. That's how it does it. Pretty cool, right? So when you're in high speed sync mode, your flash battery will last less, it'll take longer to recharge, and your maximum output is generally lower than it would be on regular flash photography. You're asking a lot out of that tiny little flash head. Kind of cool though, right? Okay, <clears throat> so now we understand what happens with the shutter and what happens with the flash. But we haven't talked about why. Like, what's the point of doing this? If you're, if you're trying to freeze motion, well, the flash is gonna freeze motion, right? You could open the shutter for a second, Assuming that you don't have, you're not in full daylight, but in a low light situation, you could open the shutter for a second or a minute or whatever, it doesn't matter, and have someone jump in the air and fire the flash. And the moment that fire flat, that flash fires, that is what will get recorded. Boom, they're frozen in the air. So you think, well, shutter speed doesn't matter, right? Right. For that, it doesn't. It does not have to do with freezing motion. What it does have to do with, though, is ambient light. Now think about this. Let's go back to this long exposure. Let's say we open the shutter for a full second. Well, if I'm outside and I open the shutter for a full second, what am I gonna get? Total white, total blowout, right? Okay. If I'm in a normal daily, normal lit indoor situation, open for a full second, it's still gonna be way, way overexposed. Conversely, if I take the shutter tighter, to go, uh, faster and faster, the scene gets darker and darker. You get to a point where you have the optimal exposure, the proper exposure, right? Let's just call it 250th of a second is going to give you a optimal exposure. If I then take that shutter speed higher, 500ths of a second, thousands, two thousandths of a second, what happens to the scene? It gets darker, right? So now I am controlling the, the scene, how light or dark it is, with the shutter speed. But hold on a second, I got a dark scene, but I still want my subject to be lit. Aha, well that is where the flash comes into play. So you're building the exposure in stages. You are starting with the background. You are building your background exposure based off of, hey, Sean, come on in, come say hi. I'm worried we can't we can't mic you up today. Sorry, but Sorry, no Sean, Sean, see this? Sean, you guys have seen him before. Sean Mark Nipper, he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be helping out. Right? Awesome. All right. I knew it. I I knew it right from the very beginning. I'm like, oh boy, he's gonna need he's gonna help. need help today. Good. <laughs> Glad you moved closer. Okay. So you're building this the shot in stages, if you will. First, you want to think about the background. How bright or dark do I want the background to be? And then you think about your subject that you're gonna illuminate with the flash. Remember, the flash. If I'm doing a picture, you know, like this, the flash is gonna illuminate me, but the fall off to what like hits even this background is considerably darker. It's basically half. And the farther away that background goes, the less this is going to affect it. So if you put your background far enough away, this has zero effect on the background. It only is going to illuminate your subject. So now I can build my shot by thinking first about the background. I want to make the background dark. I want to make it darker than normal. So I take a shutter speed that is higher than it should be so that I have a darker underexposed background. And then I illuminate the foreground, me, the subject, whatever, model, with the flash, and now the subject is illuminated properly and the background is dark. This is why you get into high-speed sync. I mean, I'm sure there's other reasons too, but this is the primary reason why you get into high-speed sync photography. It allows you to shoot outdoors and make the full-on sun daylight thing look darker than it actually is. And if you have enough light, you can actually make the background go completely black, which is really cool. But today we're just gonna start with baby steps. We're gonna go with just making the background a little bit darker. So let me show you how to put the camera into this high-speed sync mode, and then we're gonna go outside, and we're gonna take a look at it for reals. Okay, so uh, let's talk about how to get the flash into this mode. So I'll make sure I'm not in. So I'm not in this mode right now. Let me get my close-up camera up here. All right, so I am in just standard TTL, we can see this here, TTL A mode, TTL, I think A is automatic, but TTL is automatic, I'm not really sure what the A means. Anyway, it doesn't matter, TTL, fully auto. Um, and now, if I look at the shutter speed, okay, I'm in, oh, by the way, I'm in manual mode right now. Let's, let me just talk about that very quickly. Uh, you can certainly go into um, fully automatic program mode, you can go into shutter priority, aperture priority, whatever you want. I like doing flash photography in manual mode, but setting the flash to automatic, because then I am controlling my shutter speed, whether I want the background to be darker or brighter, the aperture, do I want more or less depth of field? Obviously, obviously that's also gonna have to do with how much light's coming in and exposing for the background. Um, and 
I don't want to think about how to illuminate the subject. I'm just going to let the flash go TTL, let it automatically illuminate the subject. And if I then want to make the flash brighter or darker, I could either go into manual mode on the flash, or I just do the under overexposure, you know, exposure compensation on the flash itself. So lots of different ways to do it. I just like to shoot manual when I'm shooting with strobes and let the strobes go automatic. Unless it's studio strobes and then it's all manual. But anyway, okay, so I am in manual shutter speed mode here right now. And if we go to the close-up here and I change my shutter speed, so you can see there my shutter speed is 60th of a second, right? 80th, 100, 125th, 160th, 200, 250, and that's it, right? I cannot raise it any higher than 250. To do that, I need to get into high speed mode. So let's go into here. Now, this, obviously, I'm working with the Lumix cameras here. Um, this process is the same on every camera out there. The buttons are gonna be different locations and they might be called different things. HSS, high speed sync, is probably the most common terminology, um, but it's the same idea, okay? All right, so back to this. So I'm going to, you can see the mode is currently at TTL. I'm going to push the mode button on there and the mode starts flashing. Now I spin a little dial until, wait, there's manual, um, until it gets to FP. So FP is my high speed. Somebody said focal plane, but that's not right. Is it really? Is that what it's supposed to be? I like fancy pants better. I'm in the fancy pants mode in TTL. I can also go fancy pants uh, manual, but um, I'm going to go fancy pants TTL. So we're in fancy pants TTL mode. And now, now, watch what happens. I can take that shutter speed and, aha, look at that, 400, 500. I go all the way up to eight thousandths of a second. Now, this camera will go higher than eight thousandths. It'll go up to, I think, 16 thousandths of a second, but that's electronic shutter. And remember, flash does not work with electronic shutter, only works with mechanical shutter. So you are gonna max out at eight thousandths of a second on this camera, and I think it's gonna be, I think pretty much every modern camera is gonna max out around the same. Yours might be a bit different, but it's basically the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out of TTL, and, <clears throat> pardon me, and uh, go back to normal mode, and we're gonna go outside and take a picture. So yep, max out at 250. We're gonna go outside, and uh, uh, hopefully this is all gonna work. So let's go, let's go to this camera. Okay, so we are going to, uh, we're gonna take a picture. We're just on standard mode now. I got out of the high-speed sync. We're in standard TTL. Um, I point it at my beautiful model there. Let's uh, turn the camera. Ah. And uh, uh, there we go. Let's focus on him. Um, it's flashing at me. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna take a picture. There we go. Okay, so there's the picture. So let's switch that over so you can see it. So there's the picture that we just got. You can see it's our, our man. Here, let me just do this again. Focus in. Take the picture. Oh, good job blinking. Could you, could you not blink this time? All right, so there we go. So you, the background is clearly, clearly fully lit up, right? So we've got a boring background here. The background is the same exposure as the foreground because there's no like, real shadows and we basically look the same without the flash. But I wanna make the background darker. Okay, so now how dark do I wanna make it? Now I could just start playing with the modes, but I wanna show you how to actually build the shot yourself. So to do that, and let's make sure that I am, uh, make sure I'm on the right camera. I'm just gonna turn off the flash and let's just take it off entirely. Get rid of the flash entirely. So we're in manual mode right now. And I am, let's see, let's set the camera to 250 of a second, F3.6, and I'm gonna uh, set my ISO. It's flashing. It, that's okay. It's because it's on. I'm gonna set my ISO to like 200. All right, let's just see. See what the exposure is. I swear to God, I didn't test this before. Look at that, like nail the exposure. Okay, so now let's make it, let's make it a higher, uh, higher shutter speed. Let's go up to 500 of a second. Okay, so the background's getting a little bit, oh, I, suppose I should show you this. There we go, the background's getting a little bit darker. Okay, let's do this again. Let's go to manual focus, this stops refocusing. Take it up to a thousandth of a second. Okay, darker still. If I take it up to 2,000, let's go up to four thousandths of a second. Really dark. Okay, now I don't think the flash is powerful enough to go that dark, so we're gonna try, let's try a thousandth. Okay, so there's, my background. So I go, all right, that's how I want my background to look. I want my background to be dark like that, but obviously I want my man, Sean, to be nicely lit up. So, right, right? see, you gotta, you gotta light the guy up. So let's go ahead and put the flash back on. And I'm gonna switch this back into high speed mode. So FP TTL and my shutter speed, it's at a thousand. Just leave it there where it was. And let's switch over and see what happens. And boom, there you go. There is Mr. Sean Mark Nipper, all lit up beautifully with the background nice and dark. Now let's play it, let's play it a little bit. Let's go, let's take it down to 500th of a second. Okay, we'll do a little bit less lights. You see there's a little bit more light in the background. Let's go the other way. Let's take it all the way to 2000. And I, we are going to soon hit the maximum of the flash. Actually, the flash still 
powered through that. See, now it looks like we're at a party in the middle of the night somewhere. Go up to 4,000. Yeah, even there, still working out. So that flash is powering through all those different different exposures in there, giving us enough power to do it. Now, you'll notice that the background here is in the shade. I kind of cheated here. I didn't put it in full sun because I know that this flash on its own won't overpower full sun. But what we're going to do for part two of this show, which will be in a week from today, on part two of the show, we are going to... Ooh, nice Porsche. Uh, on part two of the show, <laughs> we are going to... It was a car, not a girl. ...go off-camera flash. We're going to take three of these guys, put them into a softbox, and illuminate our subject. We'll see if Sean's still available. Maybe we can find somebody prettier. I mean, um, maybe. <laughs> we, will, we will illuminate a subject with a big softbox using three of these lights, and we'll see how that works. So we'll talk about how to do off-camera high-speed sync flash, which is a whole other ballgame. So um, that's basically it.